Statistics and Excel, Roulette Probability Example Part Number Two. Get ready and some coffee, because if we want to get futuristic, we need statistics and Excel. You know, we gotta, we gotta stop listening to the dudes on the tubes and start getting down to the stats on the maps. And the stats, the data, that's what we do. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you wanna build the entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may wanna begin back there. However, you can start from this point, building the tables as we go from here or possibly looking at this from a theoretical standpoint for probability, statistics, or specifically related to the roulette wheel. If you do have access to this workbook, there's three tabs down below, the example tab, the practice tab, and the blank tab. Example, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you could practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet and we're gonna be continuing at the blank part of the worksheet from this point going forward, practicing our Excel skills as we add to the worksheet. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going, what we will be doing and what we have done thus far. First, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. We're looking at the roulette wheel from a probability and statistical standpoint, remembering that even if you don't like gambling, these games of chance are built on the concept of probability and therefore are great examples to demonstrate probability in action, which we can then apply to many uh, other areas. So that's going to be the idea. Clearly, when we're betting against the house in a casino, it's not going to be even odds because you can think of it as we're going to have to pay for the service of the game in some way, shape or form. The way the casino obviously makes the money is that in the long run, we have an unfavorable game. That's how the casino basically will get paid for the service of providing, in essence, the games is one way that you can think of it. Obviously, if we were in an investment situation, we would want to invest in a favorable long-term situation. If we're betting against a friend or something and just playing a game in that way, you would think we would have even kind of expected value odds possibly, one way to, to look at it. So we wanna analyze some of the different things that we can bet on within the roulette wheel. And as we do that, we can kind of think that the roulette wheel looks like it has been constructed to have somewhat similar long-term expected values, even though we have all these different things that we can bet on. And so the question here, we could say, well, how can that be? Remember, there's two things that are involved here when we calculate the expected value. One is gonna be the payout that we're gonna receive. So if we put a dollar down, how much would we get back if we win, for example? And the second is gonna be the odds or probability of winning versus uh, not winning. So last time we looked at the betting on red or black, which you can think of as similar to a coin flip scenario, which we did in a prior presentation. Uh, however, it's a little bit different because it's more like the skewed coin flip scenario where the coin isn't exactly fair because of course, if it was fair, the casino wouldn't be able to pay for its roulette board, right? right? So how do, we, how do they get paid? Well, it's gonna be skewed in their favor instead of having an even number of red and black, we also have these greens on there which means that the probability of winning, now it was the 18 over 38 versus losing 20 over 38, which is 47, uh, 37, about to 52, 63. So even though we have an even payout, we have not an even similar to a coin flip. It's not 50, 50. And therefore our expected value in the long run 
was the 0 0.05626 uh, and so on. So you can do a similar type of thing uh, with the even or odds. It's basically the same calculation if you were to apply with that concept to the evens or the odds. Uh, and so I think most people kind of like betting on red or black rather than even or odds, even though it's kind of like the same uh, thing. And so then we'll go on to the next one. Well, what if I bet on the first 12 numbers? So that's going to be this one right here. We can bet on the first 12 numbers or the second 12 numbers or the third 12 numbers. Uh, what's What are going to be the odds of that? Now, we will once again calculate our expected value, which is the long-term value if you were to play this over and over again which is the concept of the casino side of things since they are going to be playing it over and over again and therefore they they're looking to win in the long run uh, so that's how we'll think of it and then we'll think about how we can empirically test that in future presentations using uh, excel to give us some random generation tools to do that or possibly you can take those same concepts and build your own kind of game the second tab has some pre-formatted cells, so you can work through the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, that's where we, we built this last time and we did the, the betting on red or black. And now we're continuing on to be betting on the first 12, the second 12, and the third 12 numbers. So let's go over here and we'll start with a skinny Q. I need to make a skinny Q to start us off. I'm gonna put my cursor on the skinny L to make it the same width and go to the home tab, clipboard, format, painter. We'll paint that down on the skinny Q, making it skinny right there. This Q just went on a diet. So now we're gonna say bet on first 12 numbers. Okay, and so then we're gonna go boom, 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 and make this a header format. Home tab, font group, let's make it black and white. All right, so there we have it. And so now we're gonna say, okay, let's do this. And first think, okay, what's the first component might be the payout. So I could say, what's the payout gonna look out, look like? Pay out. Let's make that black and white on the header. So I'm gonna say home tab, font group, black and white. So if we put down our dollar, pay out is gonna be, they're gonna give us $2 if we win and they're gonna take one dollar so we would call that two to one so we put one dollar down on one of these right let's just say the first 12 numbers and if we win then they put enough they put two dollars on top of our original dollar and we take the three dollars two dollars winnings one dollar being the one that we put down if we lose they just take that one dollar right so we don't have an even payout so you might say, well, does that mean it's favorable? No, doesn't mean it's favorable. Uh, it, it just, because we have the other component to see if it's favorable or unfavorable is the the odds, right? So now, which of course are not in our favor. It's not 50-50 odds. So now we're gonna say, what are the total numbers? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, what am I doing? We can also do it this way. When, if I win, we get we get two. And if we lose or loss, lose, we get negative one. However you want to look at it. It's usually said two to one, but you could say win two dollars. If you win, you get two versus one, you lose a dollar. Let's make that black and or border blue. Home tab, font group, border, drop down with the bucket. If you don't have that blue, it's in the more colors, standard color wear. There's the old Excel is fun, used to use that blue a lot. He doesn't use it as much anymore. I hear the, the anyway, so that's going to be what we have. So then we're going to say, all right, let's calculate our odds then. What are the odds? Well, we've got the win versus the loss and then the total, the win and the loss. We want to calculate both of them because like an accountant, that gives us kind of like our double check. It should come out to one on the total. So I'm going to say, all right, let's go to the black and white font group, make that black, white alignment center it for our header and so so let's say that we have then uh the what are we going to call this the first let's just say the first 12 the same concept is in play for either of these whether it be the first 12 or the second 12 or the third 12 numbers because uh you know you're going to have the similar odds the same odds so what what could uh we win 
uh, if we if what are the likelihoods that we win? Well, there's 12 numbers for the first 12 of them. It's got to be uh, one through 12. So we're gonna that's gonna be the likelihood. And then out of the total total numbers, what are the total numbers? Well, we know that there are equal to 36 numbers plus the zero and the double zero or two other numbers. So we have 38 numbers that it could be out of. And so then, and so that means what are the chances that we lose then? Well, there's equal, there's 38 numbers that are actually there, 36 plus the zero and the double zero. And it has to land on 12 numbers, one through 12, uh, in order for us to win. So if it lands on one through 12, we win. If it lands on anything else higher than 12 or the zero or the double zero, uh, we get a loss, I believe. And so we're gonna say this is gonna be the basis 38. So that gives us a total to double check, which has to add up to one. So in total, uh, or, you know, uh, so, whoop, hold on a sec, you don't do it like that. There it is, so it adds up to 38 over 38, which is one. So 12 plus 26 is 38 over 38 is gonna be one. If I look at it in terms of the percents, it's gonna be equal to 12 over 38. And let's percentify that to recognize it. Home tab, number group, percentify to recognize, add some decimals, and then this equals the 26 over 38. And we will percentify to recognize, percentify to recognize, and then we can calculate this way, this way, this divided by this, which is of course one or 100%. Or we can do it this way and say, this is the sum of these two, which will of course equal 100 percent so clearly when when we look at just this part of our calculation of the expected value we're going to say well this is this is not a good game right because we're going to lose a lot more than we're going to win we can clearly see that but we're going to give you a two for one payout so does that make it does that make it an even game uh so so that's the question right we can ask the question what kind of payout would be necessary in order for it to be an even game in the long run. Again, if you only play one time, then then you, you know the, we don't know what the outcome. There's a lot of odd, but if we play it over and over for a long period of time, we can expect the expected value to come out uh, accurately. We can figure closer and closer to the expected value for the longer term time that so we play it. So let's check it out. Home tab, font group, bordered. Let's make this blue. Okay, and then and then let's say let's calculate the expected value then expected value. Let's make this black and white for the header home tab font group making it black and white and we're going to say what if we win. So the way we calculate the expected values we get the payout. So we're going to win two dollars if we win meaning we put our dollar down they give us two dollars on top of our dollar in chip format if we're at the casino right and then we take our three dollars back one dollar was our original dollar two dollar winnings and uh and then we're going to say but well, what's the likelihood that they get that two dollars well it's only 31.58 uh, percent are the odds so i go home tab uh number group percentify add some decimals let's multiply that out we take the payout times the odds and we're going to say, let's add some decimals there. Doot, 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 doot. And let's say, what if to lose, we only get $1 or we lose a dollar. So we put our $1 down. It comes out at double zero or something over 12. They take the dollar. What's the likelihood of that happening? Well, it's more likely 68% number group percentify, adding the decimals, multiplying out. Well, we're going to lose a dollar times 68 percent boom now notice uh if i add decimals here uh, we might want to double check of course that these two add up to one or 100 right but we can always we can already see that up here so let's just say expected value expected value then is going to be let's add one more decimal here so it's even i can't look at it like that it's all crooked it's crooked. The decimals aren't lined up. I can't take it. Equals the sum of these two. I'm going to stop right now if you don't fix that. 
we'll have to stop the production. I will not deal with the uneven decimals. Okay, so there we have it. So let's go ahead and make that home tab, font group, bordered, and uh, blue. So once again, we come out to this expected value of 0 0.05 uh, to six. So you can kind of see, well, it kind of looks like this whole roulette game has been, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, roulette game has been kind of constructed on the idea of an expected value of that 0 0.0526, meaning, uh, five, you know, you expect to lose 5.26 cents uh, per, per, in the long term on expected value. Right, so in the short run, just like we saw, just like we saw with the betting on red or black, uh, we don't know what's going to happen, <laughs> right? Because you could beat the odds. So you, you know, the, the likelihood is is here. You could, you know, beat the odds and win. If you beat the odds and win, and you want to actually win, of course, then you might want to leave the table. But you probably not. You you might not want to be approaching a casino from the idea that you're going to win. Because again, obviously the odds are stacked against you in the long run. The longer you play, you're going to lose on average this, you know, 5.26 cents, you would think. So, so you might think of that as basically the fee <laughs> that you're doing to, to hang out in the casino and play the games. Or possibly that's the amount that's going to go to charity or something like that uh, in, the, in the event of a, uh, of a fundraiser that's set up in a gambling uh, type of situation. So that's the general idea with this one. Once again, because you have the uneven payout up here, you might say, look, it's a favorable game. So, cause it looks, cause you're getting paid two to one, but obviously that's not what we mean by favorable or unfavorable. It's not just the payout, it's the payout and the odds. So when you think about whether a game is favorable unfavorable or even we have to consider the the expected value which includes both the payout and the odds and obviously all of this idea of probability is giving us information about the long term we don't know exactly what's going to happen in in the short term you could beat the odds clearly in the short term uh, but the more you're at the table the long term the odds, of course, are going to be on uh, the casino side of things. And then we can test this, try to test it kind of empirically by basically running a mock game in Excel using random number generation, which you can use actually to make your own game if you wanted to, or just to test out this theory, which we'll do in future presentations and say, well, let, what if I ran this scenario multiple times and just let Excel give me the generations? Will we come up to an expected value of uh, this uh, uh, 5.26 cents about, right? That's what we'll take a look at in future presentations. But next time we'll go on to the next one, which is we bet on one number. What if we bet on one number? Then it's very unlikely that it's going to that it's going to come up, but you can imagine a, a game that is even or even favorable, even if you're only betting on one of the particular numbers. And the, you might ask the question of what would the payout have to be in order to bet on one number to be even odds, right? And then, of course, we'll ask the question, what are the actual odds in uh, on the roulette wheel and the expected value? And we're starting to think maybe it's going to be 0 0.0562 or 5.26 cents unfavorable in the long run.